Hello and welcome to Comp. Hello. Hello, Lucy. Hi. Wait, wait, don't play it yet. No. No. Uh-huh. I thought we were gonna go right. It, into it, it. We need to. We need to show our, the, you know, the dignity <laughs> uh, and the honor. Uh, look, I mean, I, it's no, it's no surprise that uh, the war in the Ukraine is raging, and uh, I don't know. There's an offer on the table to Zelensky, and uh, I don't know if he's gonna take it. This, this land demands, right? And uh, it's just a war, and it's not good. Yeah. And I, I don't want to go out on a limb here, but I don't like seeing people die. I don't like seeing wars happen. And, uh, you know, we were talking, you know, there's this girl on the, where was she from, TikTok or whatever, on Reddit, <laughs> with the violin and the bomb shelter. We discussed it on the Patreon that we did like yesterday that, you know, I, I just don't think uh, she was cutting the mustard mm-hmm. as far as ending the war. That, 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 that violin true. is not ending the war. The people who are suffering in this war deserve a better kind of musician. Right. To- and then, you need a song that's going to make people weep. And the uh, violin is kind of like we just got, has kind of hack. It's kind of a uh, uh, it can work, um, but just having a violin is not going to do it. You need uh, a composition that you know not just ins- not just you know creates tears, but inspires uh, honor and dignity in the individual. It uh, and, and just keeps everyone uh, a unifying song. Yes. Yeah. Uh, a war ending song. So let's. I can I can post a song which I I'm I, I'm gonna spread. I want you to envision this is gonna be blasting through bomb shelters, uh, in the Kremlin. We need to get someone with a Bluetooth hand, like one of those things that the, the delivery guys carry. Uh, okay, yeah. And oh, maybe a old school boombox in the Kremlin or right. the Falder Square, whatever it's called. And th- so this is gonna be a synchronized. Uh, everyone's gonna be hearing it at once, and I feel like this this war could end. So let's let's let's, let's give it a listen. Song that's gonna end the war. Absolutely. It's got a beat. You know, the violin has no beat. It's just... I don't know why you're laughing. I'm not laughing. No, I'm, I'm It's getting, emotional. I'm getting emotional, actually. I mean, it's also happy. That's true. Like, yeah, you're seeing the brighter, the bright morning we're headed towards. Uh, the light wait, at wait. the end of the tunnel. <laughs> this is going to make people, like, remember why they like life. This part represents the individual farmer in the Ukraine. Mm. That's why the core drops out. And that's Putin yelling, like, you know. There's, there's metaphors here. You think I'm just hitting buttons? <laughs> it's like when you have a flag. How can you have a war with this blasting? <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, this, this, someone take this and give it to Putin. Yeah. <laughs> and at the very least, maybe he can publish it. I, I'm just going to say this. Uh... For what it's worth, the Buffalo Springfield song about war. Oh, so, but, but uh, something happened in here. Mm. Yeah, what about we can't play it. Dog shit compared to this. No, it, look, that that that's <laughs> all makes you want to go to war. Yeah, that's all comes up in like Vietnam flashbacks, and you're like, oh yeah, Vietnam was kind of cool. We didn't shoot any kids, like you know, like that's kind of you know. It, I know it's meant to be anti-war, but it makes <laughs> Vietnam seem kind of cool, or at least makes you wish you were there. That's how I view it, at least. Yeah. But this is, I mean, look, at the very least, I will also, b- other case in there, I'm not going to say b- best case the war ends. But if Putin does hear it and says, hey, there's a lot of sanctions going on. We need to get our economy going. Let's have our Russian you know, record industry put a CD out. That's cool, too. Yeah. Because, <laughs> look, I mean, those people got to eat. Those people, I mean, look, so if it helps anyone, um, I, and look, don't tell them, oh, like that's like they're going to use that to fund their war effort. I don't get involved with money. I don't. I make music. I'm an artist. All right. So, you know, I've done my part. Uh, it, you know, it's up to Putin now or Zelensky. Maybe Zelensky can make his. Maybe it could be the new national anthem of the Ukraine. Yeah, totally. You know, and I feel like. Uh, not look. I'm 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 not saying Putin doesn't ever act in bad faith, and and some stuff he says isn't 
meant to even be like convincing. But I mean, he'd have less of a leg to stand on with like, oh, Ukraine's aggressive. I'm afraid of their army and the Nazis and this and that. If this was their national anthem, sure. it gives them cover. Yeah, you know, I'm sure they have some words that they use in their national anthem right now, but there's no reason they can't go over this beat. Yeah, like play, play, play some of it again. Oh, Ukraine, you are so beautiful. <laughs> we love Ukraine. Ukraine is cool. Don't invade us. We don't want war. Don't kill our kids. Stay away unless we trade. Come visit us at Chernobyl or other things that we have. I'm not the most informed ambassador about Ukraine. It's beautiful. Please don't invade us. I know I said that before, but it's important. The Azor Infantry or whatever. <laughs> it's not our national army. Yeah, uh, look, don't let, just don't invade us. Let's have a summit. We love Ray Comp. <laughs> he is our Francis Scott Key. He is so great. I'm gonna make it put it in there. Yeah. Like, don't worry, I'm not charging them for it. This goes on for a while. Yeah. 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 We're not Nazis. <laughs> we, <laughs> uh, there's no reason that shouldn't be their national anthem. I think it should be called uh, the People's March. That sounds uh, very communist. The, <laughs> the People's March. I feel like a lot of you anthems are called stuff like that. And then in parentheses, please don't invade us. Right. I mean, I don't want to sound communist, though. I mean, because people just, I know uh, Marx was, uh, I mean, I don't want to get into it. But, like, it, people don't, it doesn't play. We're not going to get anywhere helping Ukraine by branding them as communists. It's just not that popular. So we'll call it the, e uh, well, not the Eagles March. That's either Roman Empire or Nazis. Uh, the, 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 the Liberty about, March? What about the libertarian leaning people's march? Uh, is that their deal? Are they really that liberal? I don't know. Okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't they, know. The, <laughs> I don't are know they, much are they really communists? Probably not. Well, no. How about we just call them the the, uh, the, the cool the, the cool the, the dudes the guys who fuck the guys who fuck these guys fuck no one minds a no one minds a guy who fucks that's true uh, <laughs> women the, the party yeah I don't know the party of of, of uh, drugs. We, maybe we should brand like they should do the whole thing that like uh, where where's the legal drugs? Not I mean like what's the Amsterdam? Amsterdam. Mm. They should just do the Amsterdam thing, and then uh, but I guess they are kind of oh yeah. Then the, the the world would be more invested in them if they did yeah. the Amsterdam. Yeah, I guess they already have it. Like you know the problem is this: they already have Amsterdam. So like you know in the interest of self, if it's all just self interest, they'd be like, well that sucks. I guess we'll go back to Amsterdam. What if we? What if Ukraine did all the stuff Amsterdam did, but it's also legal to like pay someone to beat you to death, like? Okay. You just add something on top. Play the song again. Yeah. Come to Ukraine. And do some drugs and have a whore. It's all legal. And then if you get really bored, you pay a guy. He beats your face until it bleeds and he doesn't stop. He just keeps hitting you until you drop. Your life will end. That's what you want. We didn't do anything wrong and neither did you. <laughs> it's all legal. Come have a milkshake. We have those two. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. That works. I think yeah. that, look, that should be the pitch. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, again, we'll repeat our overarching sentiment. Uh, good luck to everyone. Not, well, <laughs> that sounds equivocal. <laughs> I mean, good luck to the Ukrainians. Yeah. Uh, you know, apparently... Um, they're, we're, we're blocking oil. We're going to stop importing oil from Russia. Yeah. I don't know what that does. 
Uh, does that mean that we can't? Uh, is it not? Is there? Is there like energy oil? I don't have a car right now, so like as long as I can get my olive oil, <laughs> I mean, okay, that should be fine. Like we don't get our olive oil from Russia, right? Yeah, I don't think they're talking about olive oil or essential oils. I mean, I imagine I think they're will, talking about the crude stuff. I imagine it'll raise yeah. uh, in, you know oil prices, and then shipping will be more expensive. Uh, I don't know the answer, but yeah, you know, we'll see. Mm. Do you, do you, do you, what, what, I mean, what are we, are we doing anything with Russia now? It seems like we're pretty, I, I, mean, I mean, at least it seems like we're pretty rapidly cutting ourselves off from them financially, at least. Yeah. Like. I should have, I should have, uh, I mean, I, 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 I sometimes think I should have bought oil futures, but then I'm a war profiteer. Right. You know, <laughs> I don't want to be a war. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like that's capitalism. But this just seems wrong. And yeah. also, I don't have enough money to invest. Like, what, am I going to make $1,000 to have that <laughs> guilt? If I was going to make a million, you know, all right. You're, you become the, the poorest war profiteer <laughs> in, in history. <laughs> oh, man. I mean, look, what amount of money would we, we need to make to, like, be o okay with the possibility? Like, there's a guilt. The overarching guilt. Because it doesn't make you a war profiteer, necessarily. Right. But there's that feeling. Mm -hmm. So like, at what point does that go away? Is Ooh. a million enough? A million is a lot. A million is a lot. I mean, a hundred thousand. No, it's, really? I think a hundred thousand. No, you need it. It needs to be at least like half a million. I think before I, it goes before it starts going away. No, it doesn't go away. The point is, like, can you live with it? Before you can, you can justify just kind of tamping it down. I'm gonna do things with this money. I'm gonna help uh, guinea pigs. <laughs> I'm gonna help uh, various uh, animals uh, avoid being neutered. I'm the anti. I'm like Bob Barker, one of the neuter everyone. I'm gonna start a thing where we don't do that. We we, we put their dicks back yeah. or whatever neutering is. <laughs> we'll reattach your dog's <laughs> dick. We'll give him fake. I mean, apparently that's a thing where they put <laughs> fake balls onto neutered dogs. I have heard of those. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we saw that. I think. That, look, every Does it fact. Make the dog more confident or something. Uh. Like, like, what is it doing for the dog? I think, yeah, I think, I think it, look, I, I, we, who can know what's in the dog's mind? Yeah. <laughs> but I think it probably, um, I think it's for owners who like the idea of the dog having a nice set, uh, who can't separate. Cause like, they don't cut you. They cut the, I guess they do cut the balls off. I thought they just did it like a vasectomy. I feel like everyone who would buy these is like, is fucking their dog. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like look, <laughs> what good is fucking my dog if I, if it, <laughs> Or like, or are they getting fucked by the dog? Because that would make more fucked. sense. Because yeah, because like, what good is a dog fucking me in the ass if I'm not getting the ball slapped? <laughs> uh, that's half the fun. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I guess they've experienced dogs who weren't neutered, and they don't want like you. You can just not neuter your dog, but I guess they're worried about getting pregnant, even though it's not. Possible. I'm trying to envision in this scenario who would want these things. Is my point. Right. Just don't neuter your dog. Yeah. D Sure. I don't know. Uh, we learned that where we learn. We learned this. A lot of what we're learning lately is coming from these trivia. We we been, we talk about Jeopardy fairly often. Mm -hmm. We let, we watch Jeopardy every night, and we started expanding into this bizarre show uh, that like they remade and it's on, it's on like ABC after Jeopardy some nights. It's called The Chase. Uh, <laughs> but we were watching the old episodes because now it's got like Ken Jennings on there and and some of the other James Jeopardy Hall's champs. Hour. But the original, and the original guy's on there. The original guy who they call the Beast, who's just a fat guy, <laughs> but they call him the Beast. Yeah. And they have his like, ex Baywatch actress. It's not like Pamela Andrews. It's some like you know lower rent Baywatch actress, and she just constantly like just does like just torments him about being fat. Yeah. Uh, he is fat. He's, he's tall disgusting. too. Yeah. He, she wore his pants on the other night. She's like, this guy, uh, I don't remember what the setup was, but he's got a size 48 waist, and he's just showing his pants. It's yeah. like, why are you doing this? Yeah, and then she's always doing, like, prop jokes about, about how fat he is. And then he comes out, and he's like, and he, instead of being like, listen to me, you dumb whore. Right. You, you aging whore. <laughs> <laughs> you brainless twat. <laughs> I, mean, like, I mean, like, any kind of comeback he has, you know, like, listen to me, you barren bitch. Yeah. Uh, he just goes like, yeah, when I was growing up, I knew I liked two things, trivia and eating. 
It's like it's not even fun. It's just like <laughs> it's just sad. Yeah. I mean, you know, I I call myself a fat fuck, but like it's like it's usually in the context of like it's just there's it's, there's not like not there, randomly. Yeah, like, not like not in the pra- like I'm, I'm more just laughing at certainly you know <laughs> picturing myself in situations. Right. But he like is just like I like to eat. <laughs> yeah. You can't, I like, can't argue with there, blonde woman. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Uh, it, it, and it's, it's a hellish. A, it's a hellish show. Yeah, like, it's, it's, it's an evil show. Yeah. Uh Because it's like it, you basically you just three people. They usually don't know each other, and like they each have to do like a, a one minute or two minute thing where they answer as many questions as possible to like bank to like earn money. So you get like five grand per question. It's very convoluted. So look, bear with me here. Is you get five grand. People tend to average about like twenty to thirty grand once they're done mm-hmm. with this part. Then you have to go in the first chase with the beast. Who like you know he'll say something to you like oh I'm gonna like I'm gonna dipsy doodle you out to the parking lot or some nonsense and then some people will talk back yeah. they'll talk shit but they're also like th- those are usually the people who like are, are like don't know anything and they and they get you know they're like this is, look at this guy he's on he's being tre- treated like a caged animal <laughs> and you're trying to go you're a beast you're, you're I ain't afraid of you it's like this is all he has yeah <laughs> and you're trying to torment them and you're not even good at trivia right uh. But then he'll like so basically like if you oh, get oh yeah that, that's the other thing is that like they build him up to be like almost like a Simon Cowell t- type of like of like he's mean he's gonna he's gonna say some mean things right. to you and then he's always just like ah eh, good job that that move makes yeah. sense unless you like try to wound him and then he like predictably like you know because he can't fight back to the pretty lady yeah so he'll fight back against you because you know she she just she just goes backstage and like pinches his fat and goes you. <laughs> You're a you're a smelly ugly fat boy in the, in his green, in the dressing room. Yeah, and he, he bullies him. Uh, so like you basically like so let's just say you get twenty grand. He'll offer you like a low offer because you have to get like five questions right, and if he gets it right, like you're kind of going on the board together. Yeah, and he'll offer you like, well, if you want to start at a lower position, I'm like further away from you, so you can you more of a chance if you get things wrong, he doesn't automatically like beat you. Mm-hmm. He'll offer you like ten grand. And he'll offer you like sixty grand to try to get them to like take less, so they have like they can't miss anything. Mm. But it's like the whole idea is to try to tempt people into losing, right. which I get. Like it's one thing in a game show, but you have this fucking like abused person, like just <laughs> sitting there like trying to like you know yeah. scheme against you. And then like it, once all three people are there, and like well, it, it, maybe you you might lose, and like is one guy left or two guys left? Then there's a final thing. Where like you have to like you know answer a bunch of questions as a team, and if, if Beast gets your number like past your number, you lose all the you get any money. You don't get any money. And it's incredibly and hard. Most, and most of the time that happens. Most people lose. Yeah. Uh, and like it'll be like like, like people will be like oh yeah I, I want to pay for because some people are like oh I want to go to Disneyland. It was a weird incestual family. <laughs> Uh, who wanted to go, like brothers who all wanted to go to Disneyland together. Yeah. But like a lot of times it's like, oh, my mom has cancer. I want to take <laughs> care of her. And he'll like knock you out and then be like, well, I guess you're not the bun in the oven or whatever. I mean, the, the, the pun would have to be appropriate to the person. I guess, I guess, uh, I guess you're, you're I guess uh, I'm your malignant tumor <laughs> right. or whatever. Uh, sorry. Go watch your mom slowly die. And like he laughs about it. Um, <laughs> So this is a bizarre show. Yeah. Usually, and like he's like he'll knock kids out. Even like he was these like cute kids who are all like teenagers. Right. They got they almost won. And he's like, oh, I don't, I didn't even want to beat you, but it's not in my nature to lose. What are you talking about? You're getting like tormented by a, uh, like whatever she is, like a you know like a, like an ex. You know she should if it's not, if not for this show, she would be one of those women that have like a car show showing you like you know asking you to you know buy a boat. <laughs> I don't know why boats whatever. You get it. Uh, uh, yeah, she would be like selling opioids to, you know, country doctors. Oh, have, I'd buy an opioid from her. She's yeah. not bad looking. Yeah. They got rid of her in the new one because she's just, you know, annoying. Uh, attractive, though. I, why we talk about this game show that, like, you know, the incarnation of which has been on for six years. Uh, <laughs> it's really to bring up like this. Because, all right, so uh, what was it? It, it? it was a topic. Oh, yeah. Like, we were, um, we saw, there was a clue on there. About right. uh, Stephen King and in, in the novel. Carrie. Right. Yes. And the question was like, what job did he have when he thought of the story for Carrie? And right. He, and and the, Carrie's a movie about the girl who's picked on. Yeah. Uh, and like she. Well, By like they, mean girls in high school. And they drop blood on her in the, in the prom, and then she goes kill. She them has all. telekinesis and she's right. killing people. But it's like, but, what's inspired by it? Like the thing is, what, what what job did the author have that like you know he, he that inspired him to write Carrie? Right. 
And the answer and, was that he was a high school janitor. Right, which amazingly, because the first scene in Carrie is just like <laughs> a ton of like, I guess, adults, like, but like playing high school girls in their underwear and their tits are out and they're in their panties, ver- naked. Yeah. A lot of bush. <laughs> And it's like, it's like well, you, it was, anyway, Stephen King was famously drunk, so we just have a people, a porky style people. Yeah, he was drilling holes. Yeah. <laughs> and as he was drilling one of his people, so he was like, hey, you know what? This would be a good story. Yeah, this would make a nice horror movie. And at first, it was just about a janitor who like <laughs> drills peepholes and, like, and kidnaps girls, but he thought it was two on the nose. But yeah. So like, he had a telekinesis. But, uh, yeah, but uh, when we were like, after when we saw this clue, I was like, do you know the story behind Carrie? Right. And, tell, tell everyone the story behind Carrie. The story behind Carrie is that Stephen King was working on it for a long time and he was getting frustrated with it, even though it was like al- almost done and he like threw it in the trash. <laughs> and his wife found it in the trash and she took it out and she was like, what's wrong with you? Like, this is almost, you got to finish this. Yeah, you drunk idiot. And it became his first big book, you know? Right. But it's like, but, <laughs> which is kind of a, a sweet story. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, I mean, it's a sweet, that the I guess like, you know, it, it sounds more like the wife was like, you do nothing all day. You waste <laughs> all your janitor money on, on, on cheap vodka. What's his drink? Does he drink vodka? Doesn't uh, matter, I guess. Uh, but, uh, and, 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 and I think he just pounded Budweiser. Yeah, did coke. Like. Right. Yeah. Uh, you wrote half. You wrote this nonsense of a book <laughs> about you peeping on women <laughs> and, and, and having ESP, but they're not enough to like know that you're peeping on them. <laughs> but you still wrote them all, almost all of a book. So why don't you finish it? You drunk. Yeah. Like the book is literally. <laughs> the lines of the book are just like nobody nobody understood Carrie quite like the janitor. <laughs> the janitor the janitor when when janitor talked to Carrie, he, he forgot about his shrill wife. <laughs> I hate my wife, said the janitor. <laughs> when I put something in the trash, that means I want it in the trash. <laughs> the janitor said. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie appreciated how the janitor was a wiser, older man who uh, didn't drink too much, and uh, and she he thought she she thought he was really cool. And his wife was just she she felt bad because the janitor's wife was so obviously a terrible bitch. <laughs> She's reading this like you still gotta finish. It. Yeah, this is incoherent. Ah, <laughs> uh, Stephen King. Oh, <laughs> my schwul. I did write down the, uh, my shrill wife. She's a real cunt, but not like your, but not like your cunt, which is suppling young. <laughs> said the janitor. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that was fun. Uh, so yeah, we'll, we'll maybe we'll bring you know bring up the chase some other time. We're yeah. gonna, I'm gonna try to get on it. Yeah. Yeah. How just, would you how would you deal with the beast on the trace? Well, I mean, because we found out an interesting fact. Because he talks at one point about like, oh, I got married just you know off season, uh, and so like, I, I guess I'll just reveal it. Like, just ask me some questions. Like, as, as the uh, presenter. Uh, uh, how many countries are in Asia? Uh, I don't know. The same amount of countries, the same amount as the amount of uh, cousins that the beast married. <laughs> And it wouldn't be right. I, I, I wouldn't get it right. <laughs> but uh, he married his cousin. Yeah. So ask me another question. Okay, uh, that was wrong. Uh, how many different types of bug species are there? Uh, I was gonna look this up, but I was too busy trying to find. You know, if, if it was criminal, you know, if it was a criminal statute about you marrying your cousin. <laughs> I mean, I'm not gonna get far in this game. Yeah. Uh. And it seems mean. It's right. good, you know, honestly, the guy's abused by you know this, this this torture. You know, it seemed fun when we were coming up with this idea where I would just go in and bla- put him on blast for his cousin. <laughs> but uh, now I'm thinking about it. And it's like let him have some happiness. Yeah, this is basically like the ch- this show is basically like a, a modern retelling of like the Hunchback of Notre Dame. What is that about? Is that about like is that guy like handicapped or just mentally handicapped or I never read that. He's he's got the physical deformity. He's got a hump. I know yeah. that. But is he also is he slow? Like or is he like is he a sharp guy? I don't think he's brilliant. Is, he's not I, com- he's not coming up with cold fusion. But also he was locked in a bell tower f- or whatever for his whole life. Sure. So, you know, can't necessarily blame it on him if he's slow. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know a lot about bells. Oh really? Uh, 
Do you, do you know about the, the Persian bells? No, I, I know how like, they sound. <laughs> oh, okay. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> it's a weird Quasimodo detour. Uh, and yeah. Uh, you know, it's, inter- it's interesting. Uh, I wanted to bring up something here. Uh, to, go, to, to pivot back to the Ukraine. Uh, there is a, someone tagged me on this on uh, I don't know, Twitter or something. Uh, I don't know if uh, I'm related to this person. I don't know what's happened. First of all, just look at the picture. Oh, wow. Is that me that holding is, a gun in the Ukraine? That is you in Ukraine. I'm not trying to, like, you know, this guy's a little more fit at the moment. <laughs> you know, I'm doing keto, but, like, you know, at the moment, he's a little, I, might, I might get more fit than him. I'm not trying to, comp- you know, that's, I'll, I'll get ahead of that curve. <laughs> but uh, but that's me, basically, right? <laughs> yeah. This is insane. Do I have family in the Ukraine? <laughs> I anyway, didn't think I was Ukrainian. That is you. That is, is, that is Ukraine you. That, I mean, he's got a cool gun, too. I don't know if that gun... He's got like an LCD screen on it. I don't know what that's about. Yeah. He's got a serious gun. Mm-hmm. He, it, it, and it, for all we know, it might be grafted to his hand. I mean, no, he's holding it. Don't this is, this don't is, give this... You don't Look, I, I all right. You, you, I see what you're doing. You're immediately <laughs> saying, oh, look, I'm going to upgrade to this version of Ray, <laughs> uh, of Kump. Who's got a gun? He's got a weird he, look. First of all, he's got a bowling uh, uh, wrist bracket on. That's like a wrist bracket you wear when you're bowling. <laughs> so let's not pretend like he's got a gun hand. I'm not sure his wrist <laughs> could handle that. He's got he's got carpal tunnel. Right. But he does have a cool gun. Uh, I don't know what this means. Um, I mean, I I, I dare to say, uh, should we like try to get this guy? I mean, can we find this guy? I hope he's alive still. I mean, I you know, I think we should reach out. I think we should try to find him. We could find a fixer or something in Ukraine and he could find be, this guy. We we gotta befriend this guy. He'll be like, oh yeah, you you look kind of like me. If I let myself go, I'm like, hey hey, <laughs> enough. But like, but the point is, we gotta be, we befriend him, and then he we give him the, the CD to give us Linsky. Yes. My song. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. this is our in. Yeah. No, this guy is gonna be. Uh, well, I hope he's alive still. So. Uh, that's the thing about Godspeed. war. You never know about war. I'm not trying to be glib. You never know who's still alive. Uh, speaking of that, um, I guess not. Speaking I think of at that. this point it's fair to say that you have you have family involved in this war. <laughs> I mean, look, I, look, uh, family. That guy has got to be a cousin or something. I mean, uh, look, the people who were related to me were like in Yugoslavia, I guess, which is that near Ukraine. I mean, you could say it is, but it's probably like whole countries away mm. uh who knows maybe he just went there maybe he's a german guy who went there or go guy who went there yeah or the go chase represented in the uk or ukraine in the uk uh i don't know <laughs> he's part of the contingent that actually are nazis <laughs> can i use this uh it, it would, that would be stolen valor right what it'd be worse than stolen valor if i just <laughs> used this and said it was me you i like, had some argument where i'm like i'm like i go out and i go like I'm, I'm making the case that, like, you know, oh, like, you know, we, we got to give Putin a little bit of uh, wiggle room uh, and, they, and, you know, in order to, you know, maybe give him a chance to have an out to, le- to end the war. And they go, you're, you're a pro-Russia propagandist. And I, and I bring up this picture and they say, oh, yeah, that's me in the Ukraine <laughs> holding a gun. <laughs> and uh, I mean, it would probably work. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not going to do it. That would be a totally immoral and like terrible, but. You know. Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I don't think you should pretend to be him. No, but, I mean, no, I, I shouldn't. But if he ever, if he does survive this war, which, which, uh, God protect him. God protect him. And, <laughs> and he does end up visiting the U.S. or, or coming here to live at right. some point. Maybe, maybe there's a little parent trap thing you guys can do. Um, I barely ever see my parents. What's the plan? <laughs> Well, not exactly. Not not a literal. Yeah, my parents plan. are still married. Don't they, the whole thing getting them back together. <laughs> not a literal. Well, maybe you can. Maybe you guys can team up and and make them get divorced. I mean, it, sure, I'll push them over the edge. I mean, look, two of me. Yeah. That that that. I mean, well, we'll I'll have to convince them to let me move in, which I don't think they would let me move in. Right. Uh, let alone this guy. Be funny. I honestly, I wouldn't put it past the situation to be like they let him move in, not me. I mean, I haven't asked for a while. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to live with my parents, but I feel like they would be like, "No, oh, this guy seems more our speed." <laughs> Even though, you know, he, you know, I don't believe that. I don't think my parents are better than me. 
and and that and that like this <laughs> and this Ukrainian militant is a a better son, right? But I can see them thinking that. Mm. To be clear, uh, should we talk about the Batman? Yeah, of the week. Uh, so here we go. We have this is the following up from last week. We we had you know the, the hundredth episodes. We had a nice spread of three figures from the uh, the three Jokers uh, set of or, or line of uh, whatever. This is uh, also from the same line. This is the new Three Jokers edition of the Red Hood. Now, you mm-hmm. know who Red Hood is? No. Okay, so Red Hood is... Are you familiar with Jason Todd? Uh, no. Jason Todd was the Robin after Dick Grayson, who was a little bit more rough around the edges, a little more uh, arrogant, a little more, you know, conf- I think he came from a troubled background. And... Uh, the fans didn't like him very much. They liked Dick Grayson, but he went to become Nightwing in the Teen Titans. Uh, and so the fans weren't crazy about him. I think the people at DC were like, look, this, is, this isn't, you know, taking off this whole new Robin guy. Uh, we have to address this. And they addressed that by having a story arc where this Robin is brutally beaten to death with a crowbar by the Joker. Holy shit. Well, actually, technically, he's brutally beaten after finding his, you know, long lost mother. Uh, they travel to, I don't it maybe Iran? I think it's Iran. They travel to Iran, he t- and, and he finds his little, and the, the two of them, he beats, he ties them up in a warehouse, he beats Robin half to death with a crowbar, but then the bomb kills him. And like, and they did a the whole thing where like, uh, they, probably, they basically made two versions of it, where like maybe he lives, and they, and they had like a 1-900 number that like fans could like, you know, call before that issue came out. And uh, so it was pretty cynical. Mm. It was like basically, hey, you guys killed him. <laughs> it's not our fault. Right. Um, but anyway, so Red Hood is, is Jason Todd. Many years later, come back to life somehow. I think they, someone put him in the Lazarus pit mm-hmm. of Ra's al Ghul. And uh, he's got a chip on his shoulder for Batman. And uh, he's... Because, um, you know, like, I mean, I, I think he gets mad, mad at one point. Cause he's like, look, I get you don't kill people. Uh, I'm not asking you, you know, but why is the Joker still alive? Right. I mean, why the Joker? Yeah. And I'm sorry, he's much angrier. I mean, I mean, but he made a decent case. So he's a, a vigilante who hurts people. Mm. Um, yeah. So what, what, do you, what do you think about, I mean, what do you think about that, first of all? <laughs> well, I think it's kind of a cool uh, character. Sure. I mean, you know. What do you think about a company? He, he's just going around. He's like, I got hit with a crowbar, so I'm going to go around hitting people in the knees with a crowbar. Well, that's like, the thing. He, I mean, bring up the other one. I, I prefer. What's interesting is uh, this is the we on a pre, um, one of the first uh, episodes of you know that we, we're doing the comp, the Batman's with. I, this is the original figure that they did for Red Hood, mm. uh, not the yeah, you know, and he's got guns. <laughs> Uh, which he does have guns. The weird thing is, in Three Jokers, he shoots one of the Jokers at that in cold blood. Mm. Uh, and they gave him a crowbar. Yeah. Which is ironic because he was beaten. I and mean, maybe he has a crowbar. I forget. But whatever. Uh, what I'm really getting at, though, is... Uh, I don't know. Get, get rid of him. <laughs> uh, can we incorporate that, 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 that sort of strategy into our show? Can, oh, where people, we have a, can we set we have up a, a number. A 1-900 number or a GoFundMe and maybe I'll cut my finger off. <laughs> uh, <laughs> perhaps, or like, you know, what, what sort of things can we do? I'll give, you know, uh, I think a lot of people are probably surprised they don't have diabetes, but I'll give myself diet. I'll just start taking insulin mm. if you give us enough money. Yeah. Is that legal, first of all? <laughs> I, I, well, it's, it's, you know, one thing for one thing is for certain, it's legal in in our vision of U- Ukraine. In Ukraine, uh, you can you can inject insulin and <laughs> on OnlyFans if if the money's right. Uh, I mean, like, that that is kind of like Kickstarter now, right? But like, but can you do it? I think it only works because people are like we want to see this. Yeah, we want to see it like someone die, even in a comic book. And I don't think we should like. I mean, there are things on the on the dark web. I don't even want to talk about where people, you know, that, that, we're not talking about that. Right. I'm talking about like maybe cutting the tip of my finger off. Mm. Is that, is that something we could pull off? I don't It'd think it'd have to be like two grand. Honestly, I think if the government can keep you from slightly mutilating yourself, they're, they're tyrants. 
and they need to, and the government needs to be open. Yeah, who are you to say I need like the tip of my pinky? Yeah. Like, who, who, you know, what, what is it? What, what kind of, oh, I'm sorry, are we living in Soviet Russia? <laughs> oh, oh, I can't slam my uh, dick into a bowling ball. <laughs> I, I can't drink a COVID sweat from a guy who has COVID. I mean, we, we might be able to do this stuff. Well, mm. are, you, are you confused by what COVID sweat is? <laughs> yeah. I just picture a guy who's, uh, look, we had COVID and we, we got, you know, cold sweats. At least I did. Yeah. Imagine someone bottling that and you, and you drink it as a prank. Maybe <laughs> instead of the ice bucket challenge, we start the COVID sweat challenge where you have to drink someone's COVID sweat. And instead of being like, hey, Samuel Jackson, I challenge you with the ice bucket challenge. You just send your COVID sweat to someone and you drink the COVID. But the problem is that it probably won't give you COVID. So you'll have to just get COVID some other way. Right. It won't have the same chain mail effect. What what cause would the the cold sweat COVID bucket challenge be for? Uh, uh promoting um my beats. <laughs> promoting peaceful beats. You have to you have to, you have to use my beats in the video. Uh <laughs> I don't know. Look, what 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 what's a charity that's that's getting overlooked because of Ukraine? Um you know, the kid, the, the, the make a wish. How many make a wish kids aren't getting the meat? Uh, you know, Feruza Balk. <laughs> um, I, I don't remember what she's from, but where do people know Feruza Balk from? Do you remember her? I, I, I know the name a little she's bit. She's in stuff. She was a kind of a grungy chick in the 90s and the 2000s. Yeah. Not a very successful career in the <laughs> long run. Uh, but this kid wants to meet her, and he can't because the necessary funds have been diverted to Ukraine charities. Mm. That's what I'm afraid of. I can't prove that. Um, or some kid wants to go, uh, you know, to, to the to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame museum. That, that really sucks. Yeah. And uh, he can't go. Or, or what am I thinking of? The Guitar Hotel. What's that? They have this guitar <laughs> hotel in, uh, in Florida. In Florida. It's just for no reason. It's just shaped like a guitar. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, is this the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? You're like, no, it's just the Guitar <laughs> Hotel. Let me see if I can bring a picture up real quick. It's insane. <laughs> guitar Hotel is like one of those things, one of those dumb things that like a kid would be obsessed with going to. I bet, I bet a lot of sick kids want to go to the Guitar Hotel. I mean, until they get there and they realize it's just like, a, it's just a hotel that has, you know, the room service isn't great. Right. Uh, they probably have a decent mini bar for alcohol, but, you know, the kid's. You know, he's not going to appreciate, he'll drink something, but he's not going to appreciate good gin. Oh, yeah. No no hotel with a gimmick like this can possibly have good room service. No, this is terrible. We know uh, we went to that Wes Anderson-themed hotel. Oh, in uh, Richmond. It wasn't officially Wes Anderson-themed, but, like, it seemed, <laughs> it sure seemed like it. And, uh, yeah, that was horrendous. Terrible. No, I mean, what I want from a hotel is a nice, uh, you know, how are nice hotels? New Orleans. Mm. I want to get involved with the Make-A-Wish thing. And modify their wishes. <laughs> like, come to me. You be the mother of a kid. Okay. And you tell me a, a wish. And I'm, I'm, I would, I, first of all, like, if you want to go to the Guitar Hotel, <laughs> I would tell them, you know, come to New Orleans. We'll stay at the, the Ponta Train. They have these really good uh, crock d'oeurs, whatever they, those things are, with the ham and the cheese. And uh, they make great grits uh, you're in, the, in, the, in the Garden District. Anyway, you know, but we'll come up with something. Um. Thank you so much for meeting with me. Hello, ma'am. Um, uh, my child, Sammy, is... Uh, is, your, is your, are, you, are you still married to your father, or what, what's up with that? Uh, yes, yeah, we're, we're uh, ha happily married. Uh, okay, uh, that's fine. Yeah, um, <laughs> well... No, I, 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 I might have asked you, you know, if you wanted to go, uh, you know, get some, get some sausage and beer with me, but, you know, I'm not going to hit on a married woman. You, you know. Anyway, my son, Sammy, <laughs> is uh, uh, he's very sick. He has leukemia. I'm not sure if he's going to last much longer, mm -hmm. to be honest. Yeah. Um, and he has this dream of going to the Guitar Hotel. Side note, uh, have you ever have you ever tried knockwurst? It's kind of like a hot dog, <laughs> but it's thicker. It's like in the war. I mean, I'm just putting it out there. We don't have to. It's not going to be a date, but, you know. Anyway, your son. Are, are you? Is the idea to bring my son to the Bratwurst I place? Mean, or? You have to. I mean, look, uh, like, I could... I, I I could be a new like the new dad I guess but I don't want to have no, to no like, no he doesn't need a new dad I well mean. I mean this, this one got him cancer or whatever he has <laughs> I mean you know, I'm just saying I, I I don't know what I would do better but I know I didn't give him cancer is that leukemia yeah, yeah well I don't that's think you, in the blood you can't really give someone cancer you know well genetically you did probably you know. <laughs> 
I mean, I don't, I don't know how. I'm not a doctor. I don't know how cancer works, but uh, I know it wasn't my uh, blood marrow or bone marrow that did this to him. <laughs> uh, but anyway, do you think it's possible for you? You work for Make a Wish, right? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a consultant. Yeah, yeah. I'm like an intermediary that they, but they're aware of me. <laughs> Is it? Possible? They know. They know I'm. They know I'm around. Do you think it's possible that Sammy could go to the Guitar Hotel? Well, no, it was a different, different one. We already did the Guitar Hotel. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that Danny could, <laughs> I already told you about the Danny, I mean, Sammy. Sam, whatever. Uh, that's, super kids. That's, that Sammy could go to a, a Disney World. He really wants to go to Disney World okay, he, here, before he inevitably dies. Here's the thing about Disney World. There's too many lines, which I don't want to deal with. Uh and like you have all these passes. I, I watched this two hour video about the history of the fast pass. It's a really convoluted place. How about we take him to Detroit? Okay. Now hear me out. The city of Detroit. Yeah. Okay. Why would that be better? Well, because look, make it here's, hear me out. Is your kid going to live? No. Okay. So you're going to have a lot of grief. You might not be able to work, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And like, so how are you going to pay your bills? Here's the thing. Make a wish. Doesn't, they think we're going to Disney World. Now, I get a piece of this. So don't think I'm, I'm, you're going to cut me out. But we go to Detroit, though. And, and your, your dollar, they have all these like kids who like these hipster kids who like grow eggplants on top of buildings or whatever. And, and bro, in ex car factories, they squat. We can squat somewhere in Detroit. I mean, and we'll just go there. And, you know, we'll see what happens between us, but that's not the important. <laughs> but my point is, like, you know, this trip is like 10 grand. You can keep, like, most of that. <laughs> I mean, I get a cut. I get, I mean, you know, so maybe you get, like, nine grand minus, you Are you, you know. suggesting that I steal my son's Disney World money? Why did you come? And, and what? give part of it to you? What did you and think go to this Detroit for some reason? Yes. What did you think this was? <laughs> Who do you think I am? I, I, I'm, I'm my trip advisor? <laughs> am I the Travelocity gnome? I'm, a, I'm an illicit guy. <laughs> You found me on the dark web. <laughs> Why do you think I was hitting on you? I, I I couldn't remember. You know, chicks in the dark web are very uh, you know, they're very hot to me. I like dark web chicks. <laughs> dark web chicks. Um. <laughs> so, so I mean, do you, you look Disney you World? You Disney me. World's not going to bring your take the leukemia. They don't have dialysis machines or whatever. That's not that. That's, that's something else, right? Well, look, I, 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 dialysis is for the kidneys, but, uh, okay. But that, that's neither here nor His there. Kidneys probably on oh, great shape either. You know. <laughs> probably not. <laughs> he is dying of leukemia. But, yeah, he's but, dying. Exactly. But my, you're not dying. My husband and, I'm and I not dying. are very well off and we, we don't, we don't have to move to Detroit. So to, why are you coming to make a wish? Why are you taking him to Disney where you cheap bastards? <laughs> I understand you're well off. You're, you're just like abusing a charity. <laughs> You come in the dark well, look, web. Part of the you, way that we we got to be so wealthy is we try not to spend money on things that we don't have. If we don't by, have by, to. by milking charities for <laughs> designed for people who don't have money. That I mean, look, look, look you get you get fast judgment on me. You were gonna embezzle your the, the, my son's uh, Disney World. Money. I provide cash to people who don't have a lot of it, and like their kids, you know, it's like the probably doesn't deserve the, you know a nice trip. Uh, let's be honest. What did he do? He got sick. Okay. <laughs> But you're, what you're doing is terrible. <laughs> you're a bad person. Uh, I don't know how we got on this. Yeah. <laughs> the Guitar Hotel. The Guitar Hotel. Um, did we leave something out? No, anyway. Um, so here's the deal. I wanted to also, I have another multimedia aspect here. I wanted to, because... Again with the Ukraine, things all keep come. You know, it's going. They come and they go with Ukraine. Uh, one thing, and it kind of reminds me of something you said on the uh, on the Patreon. You know, you, you were you were plotting about like you know possible assassinations. Yeah. Uh, and, and we don't want you know allegedly. Uh, <laughs> and I'm I'm very careful about it, right? I'm like you know you don't like, even though it's a joke, don't like necessarily say like. But apparently, uh, Lindsey Graham. Outright, like called for Putin's assassination yeah. on uh, Twitter, and uh, which is bizarre for a couple of reasons. One, the brazenness of it, and two, it's Lindsey fucking Graham. Uh, let me bring this up. Lindsey Graham was well, Putin. Uh, where's a picture of Lindsey Graham? I think I had one here. 
This is Lindsey Graham. Now, Lindsey Graham is not exactly Rambo. <laughs> He's not Zelensky. <laughs> He's always struck me as a... I don't know. I'm not even trying to like make any kind of accusations, but he's kind of like a a nerd, like a, like a southern, like a bookworm or not bookworm because he's you know he's not quoting Proust all the time. But you know, like a he's a southern puff. He's a pu- he, yeah. he, he's a lightweight. He's a guy who's like, hey, like I, he's like a, he's a tough. He talks <laughs> tough about taxes, but you know, like and like we should really you know go assassin. This guy like couldn't even fight like a uh, that came with leukemia. Yeah. Um. But yeah, apparently. He has, let's read the tweet. <laughs> this tweet is kind of insane. <laughs> is there a Brutus in Russia? Is there a more successful Colonel Staffenberg in the Russian military? So he's, he's that's like Tom Cruise's character from Valkyrie. Mm. Which is like, there's no reason to throw that guy. I mean, that guy died trying to kill Hitler. Yeah. And you're like, a more successful Colonel <laughs> Straffenberg. Yeah. Well, you got to throw shade on Straffenberg while you're doing this? Yeah, really. Uh, the only way this ends is for somebody in Russia to take this guy out. You would be doing your country and the world a great service. And, like, even, like, lunatics. I think, like, Marjorie Taylor Greene was even like, this is, no. Like, this is bad. <laughs> uh, it's bizarre. And of all people, when, I mean, I'm not sure. Like, who, who should call for this? I mean, if someone's going to do this, who would you be? Like, it, like, if Jesse Ventura did this, it'd be like, all right. I mean, Maybe. Maybe like you know, but like I feel like Lindsey Graham, it's uh yeah, like it's, it's the wrong guy for this message, right? And he's not backing down. He doesn't remove the tweet, and he's uh apparently Twitter won't take it down. Uh, Twitter r- rules allow for public interest exception in which government fi- government figures or elected officials can express themselves freely, quote, giving the significant public interest in knowing and being able to discuss. Their actions and statements. Why didn't that apply to Trump then? Uh, well, that's why they didn't take him down for a while. But I think at some point he started. I think when they finally took him down, it was like, was he promoting? The, was it a Capitol riot thing? Oh, maybe. But that's why they, you know, for a long time they didn't. To be fair. Um, yeah. I, look, I mean, what do you what do you make of this? <laughs> This guy is like Lindsey Graham is definitely like vividly imagined going back in time to kill baby Hitler. Oh like, yeah, <laughs> I mean, I, I, look, I, it just it's it's kind of interesting. To like, I mean, should we have? I mean, is Lindsey Graham ever run for president? I don't think so. Maybe we should get this guy out there. Maybe. Maybe we need this guy. He's like the new Trump, but like a great. We should uh, invade Czechoslovakia while we're at it. I mean, how about we depose their leader? How about they? I mean, is there a brut? Is there any lamer way? Is there a Brutus in Russia? Like, well, all right, Julius Caesar, but like, it just seems like he only knows it from the Shakespeare play, even. Right. I don't know. It's just a bizarre thing. There's a lot. It's just, um, and then Trump, uh, in a similar fashion, uh, also has some crazy. He thinks that we should uh, paint. I think F 22s He said as uh, under as Chinese, the way Chinese do, which I'm not even sure if they use F 22s but whatever. Uh, and then go bomb Russia and pretend we're Chinese <laughs> and like start a war with them. That's incredible. Which, I, uh, I mean, look, it, it's an interesting idea. I feel like this is the same plot as like, it's an old episode, but the South Park, uh, whale wars episode <laughs> where like the Japanese are just killing dolphins all the time and, and whales. And at the end they, they reveal that like, Oh, you know, because the Hiroshima and Nagasaki, they show him a picture of like the Nola Gay. The Americans gave us this picture, you know, and we're very grateful to them. And it's just like the whale and and, and the dolphin, (laughs) like riding, you know, piloting the Nola Gay, dropping the bomb. (laughs) This is like what he like thinks we can do. Oh, that was China, as if like, I mean, I imagine satellites could maybe spot these planes or. Yeah. Maybe he's right. Maybe it would work. I don't know. Honestly, this is the kind of thing that probably would have. Maybe it would work like before any kind of communication systems were built. Right. Like it's like now it's just kind of like you know Putin and uh, Z or whatever just like text each other. Yeah. And, and also they're like, like, <laughs> they're like hey, they was even, that was that your plane? No, that was an American. It was painted. Do they even look like at Chinese. paint jobs? I mean, I'm not sure how this works. To be honest, but like, wouldn't they just see radar of planes? And go, oh, they're bombing us. And then, like, it's just like, oh, America just bombed us. No, it's painted Chinese, didn't you see? It's like, <laughs> no, we didn't, we didn't see it. It was F-22. We know that from the whatever radar signature. Uh, <laughs> China actually has the F-21s or something. I don't know. Right. But it just it seems odd. 
But I also think it's a good idea. Yeah. I think maybe. We, look, we could try it. We could. We could try this. Um, one, oh, speaking of the Patreon, other things that you brought up. Mm. So yeah, yeah, we did it yesterday. It's very fun. You can check it out. You know, whatever. We'll plug it later. Uh, but we were talking about how much you hate the song Bob O'Reilly. Yeah. And it's a long, it, it, we'll get. We really like, investigated whether that was legitimate. And you the thought they were frauds. Yeah. Basically, yeah, you explain, your, quickly explain the premise. Like you, you thought they were frauds who were. <laughs> Pretending to be rich, uh, poor. Look, I don't know. I don't know the background of the Who. Right. But when I when I listen to the lyrics of Bob O'Reilly, it just feels like someone like writing about being poor, but they don't know what that like. It's like it, they're they're writing trying to write about a situation. But they're phony. But it's but it's and you're phony. aloof. And, you, and, and after, I, comp- I compared it. Well, yeah, because after, well, after we recorded, after we turned yeah. the mics off, you told me this story, and I'm like <laughs> this should have been on the episode. Yeah. But then we, so we have to share this with the world. Because. We kept talking about Bob O'Reilly, and one of the ways that I tried to kind of express what I was what I was feeling was that I was like, I was like, it kind of reminds me of this story I wrote when I was a kid. Right. Uh, it was like an assignment that we were supposed. It was Catholic school. We were supposed to write a story about Jesus coming back to Earth in another form. Okay. Right. And so I decided to write a story about Je- Jesus coming back to Earth. As like a, a a black inner city kid. Interesting, <laughs> and evocative the, choice. And the story is about <laughs> these two inner city kids, and originally one of them gets into Harvard. Right, that was like, right. That was the initial plan. Right. Yeah. The one who's Jesus gets into gets into Harvard. Right. I don't know what I thought any of this had to do with Jesus. Right. To, to be clear. I mean, it sounds like you wanted to just write some kind of, you know, story about inner city black kids right. and you ham fit like whatever the teacher said, you would have like, you know, uh, write a story about your summer camp. All right. Well, I, I, I met this guy who told me about these two. And you had this whole thing set up about this Harvard bound uh, inner city kids. But then I was like, I don't know. Something told when I was a kid, something inside said like Harvard's a little bit hack. Right, but, well, I agree. It'd but, be like, yeah, well, the idea is that you know this kid but, is coming from you know is not privileged, and he's gonna go, yeah, Harvard. It just sounds like you as a writer, you don't want to just be like, yeah, he went to the you know, the best school in the world. No, it's a little, it's a little, uh, yeah. Uh, but, so you replace uh, you replace it with like you know with a Vassar, William and Mary, what's the women's college, William and Mary, uh, well, Yale. Well, see, I didn't Princeton, really, I didn't really know MIT. That's, you know, I don't know. Uh, Duke even Duke's a decent school, right? I didn't really know about any of those other schools. Sure. <laughs> so you're instead, a high school kid, yeah. So instead of getting into Harvard, he <laughs> also impressive, I think. He got it. <laughs> he got into Pace College. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, Pace, it's not even Pace University. It's Pace College. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I mean, look, I'm not shitting on pace. I've known people who went there. It's fine. Uh, it's in New York City somewhere, right? Like near like the West Side Highway, I think, or East Side FDR. <laughs> yeah. uh, nothing wrong with going, but but, the, but, but I, know, I, I think but you I, framed it as like I'm making good. I'm getting out of this. Thing. I made a really big deal about right. him getting into. Like, pace. Describe, do you remember any like the uh, flowery language you used about him getting into Pace University? I vaguely. <laughs> I vaguely remember uh, a line that was kind of like, <laughs> we were both pretty smart, but he was the one who was going to Pace, Pace College. University. <laughs> did we, did you, when you were saying Pace College, you weren't saying Pace University. I don't think I said Pace University. <laughs> Pace College. <laughs> but he was the one who was going to Pace College. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when when the when, when the story got graded. Like, where was this? Did, did, did this kid have a college? He was. I mean, if they're both pretty smart, <laughs> or is he just a liar? He's like, hey, look, we're both smart, but he's the one that's going to, uh, you know, welding school. Which I, look, I, I wish I went to welding school, but you know, I don't think you need like a sixteen hundred SAT score to get into it. <laughs> Did that kid have a college he was going to? I don't think so. Okay. Uh, but we're both pretty smart. I got a 400 on the SATs. Uh, so, yeah, I'm, I, yeah, but I don't want to brag, but my friend, I mean, he, he, he got into pace. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. And this kid gets shot in the story, right? <laughs> yeah, right. And then, so he, he, and then he, the, kid, the kid who's Jesus gets shot. And it's true. Look, it's, it's like anytime kid, anyone gets shot right. and is interested, the kid came from a troubled background or whatever, it's tragic. But I feel like you framed the tragedies. 
Oh, now he won't be able to go to Pace University or Pace College. <laughs> he was moments away from attending Pace College, but it was cut down in his prime. We're going to get some hate mail from people who went to Pace. Right. <laughs> but the, the, well, and the, and the little bow on so. But you, you, so I turned the story in, and the teach, even the teacher who was grading it, it's like one of her notes on the story was, Pace College isn't that great of a school. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that big of a deal that he's going to. <laughs> I love that too because, like, I, I'm, I'm sure your teacher didn't go to Harvard, right, or any Ivy or no. any whatever. Like, I don't even think the Ivies, whatever the Ivies are, whatever they are. But like the idea, they probably went to a comparable school to Pace. And like they were just, and it's a, but like you, you're you saying this stuff didn't make them feel like, oh yeah, you know she appreciates the fact that he's a, no, it's like look, I know what I am. Let's be honest, I actually went to Pace. It's not that good for school. <laughs> right, <yeah. laughs> that's why I'm teaching you. Uh, <laughs> uh yeah, that's hilarious. <laughs> it's amazing. So that's to me, Baba O'Reilly is the song version of that story I wrote. Uh, I guess. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think I think you you're being a little generous to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Bob O'Reilly, you know, has at least got a catchy intro. Do we? Do you, there's no way you have that anywhere, is there? What? There's no there's no possible way you have that story somewhere, is it? I don't think so. That would be you know. That would be incredible. I wish I had it. I, I I would read it on the podcast. I I pay I would pay so much. I mean, can we can we get a hold of your teacher? Would they have it? Maybe. This is like this is like 15 years ago, right? This is a long time ago. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's but, uh, sad, very sad. Sad if true. It is true. <laughs> um, wrap this up in a second. I don't even know what this is about, but NASA wants to destroy the International Space Station in a couple of years. Why? I don't know. I mean, I, I can you want me to find the story. Oh, oh, it's like a long term plan. Well, let me find this because I remember seeing it and being being baffled. Uh, and so I made a note of it. Let's see. Following history. When I first saw that ri- that note on your list, I thought it was like retaliation for Ukraine. Well, that's my thing. I mean, that okay. So NASA wants to destroy the International Space Station. Here's why. Uh, NASA has announced plans for the ISS to be officially decommissioned in 2031. I didn't think people were up there still. We stopped. We like we got rid of like. Didn't we get rid of like? The shuttles, or is a lot of just bringing everyone like a ferry back and forth? We stopped. Like, didn't NASA stop flying? Oh yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, yeah. What are they doing? After now? dozens of launches since '88, got the station up into orbit. Uh, bringing it down will be a feat of its own. The risks are serious if things go wrong. NASA plans for the decommissioning operation will culminate in a fiery plunge into the middle of the Pacific Ocean, uh, a, a pl- location known as Point Nemo. Also known as spacecraft graveyard. <laughs> well, that just sounds like a place where you they probably you know, they probably dock their boats there and have Epstein parties <laughs> or whatever. Uh, I don't know. This story is we, 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 you know, I got an idea for the show. I'm gonna start reading the articles before I bring them up in the show, so I'm not like ah, what is this? There's too many words. Why don't you have a paragraph instead of an article? Yeah. I always yell that. But in fact, I should have read this. It doesn't matter, Mike, because the reason I'm bringing it up is we like, we're, we should. Wipe this article off the internet. Right. We should use this. Mm. The, the United States should, like, blow up the International Space Station. They should make, like, a fake... They should get, get Elon Musk and make, like, a fake UFO thing and blow it up. Yeah. And then, like, you know, have the UFO blow it up. And then I'm not sure what the next the rest of the plan is, <laughs> but there's all sorts of ways you can go. You can then uh, showcase some fake laser that we have. That we and like oh we we these aliens blew up the space station but we just took them down no one else better fuck with us because our economy is gonna be crumbling in ten years yeah. I mean it's already getting you know it's looking bad right uh, or we just do it as a a cool promotion for Pepsi you know or something you know I I don't know it just feels like you have to blow up a space station why are we telling everyone this is an opportunity we're we're not dealing with the people who fake nine eleven anymore I feel like those people retired. And now we just have a bunch of hacks. Like if, if, if Rumsfeld and Cheney were around, they would they, they'd be like, "Oh, the space station, we're gonna blow it up." All right, keep your mouth shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> mum, keep mum. That's immediately recognized. That's an amazing 
opportunity. Right. We at least blame it on terrorists. Yeah. I mean, even that would be like terrorist blew up the space station. <laughs> <laughs> Plan yellow or whatever. Right. Today's a yellow day now. <laughs> we have to, you know, your phone has to take a picture of your dick now mm. to, in order for it to open. I don't know. I mean, I'm not the guy. I, I, I'm, I'm brainstorming here. But we, yeah, we could use this. Right. Well, we, we, not me, us. Yeah. America. <laughs> not me and you. We can't. Uh, can we? Can we buy the International Space Station? They're going to blow it up anyway. Yeah, that's a good question. Maybe they we should can. just. Yeah, they should auction it. Yeah, I would love to shoot at it from from my, from like you know yeah. in the woods, <laughs> just kind of like a long range rifle <laughs> and shoot. I mean, it would work. I mean, right. you can't get that far, but it'd be fun. It'd be fun we're to shooting do. Shooting skeet at the at the International Space Station. I feel like yeah, <laughs> and I, well, no, I meant like from Earth. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I feel like if I owned it, they can't like give me shit. Right. Like, you can't. Hey, you can't shoot this out. I own it. Like, I bring up my like deed. Mm. None of this would work. I don't know what my fantasies are. <laughs> They're bizarre. <laughs> Uh, but that's just, you know, that's a comp. That's a comp day. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you, you got anything you want to promote before we go? Anything you want to say? Any, any, any prayers you want to give out? <laughs> Novenas? Um, Hail Mary. You're not going to say yeah. You're just going to say right. <laughs> Okay. It's a sh- uh, you, know, you know, it's shorthand, but you know what the prayer is. Say the prayer, Hail Mary to yourself if you want to feel good. Yeah. Okay, that's Lucy's advice. Right. Uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Uh, check out the Patreon if you like, if you're into this and you want to check out more. We have the Patreon. Uh, you get extra episodes every week. It's $5 a month. Uh, so, you know, people are enjoying that. Get on board. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you all next week. Have a good week. <laughs> <laughs>